So in this video, we're gonna show you what the finished product should look like when installing the uh, deluxe sink option for the trail kitchen. Trail kitchen. Um, so starting with probably first is inside the kitchen itself when you're installing the hinge. Um, you should make sure that your bolts, the nuts are facing out of the kitchen and so you should only see the bolt heads inside your tray. And then while you're in here, you'll also install your rigid arms, your extending arms. Um, the bolt and nut pattern uh, doesn't really matter in this sense as long as you have a uh, bolt uh, and then the corresponding shoulder washer and then shoulder washer and then the nut. So just however it's easiest for you, I found that it was easiest to put the nut here and run the bolt towards the outside. So if you do this, then you should be able to flip your uh, countertop in and it will store underneath the top. Um, so moving on from there, if you have the deluxe kitchen or I guess the sink in any shape or form, you'll have the sink, you have the cutout, you want your uh, textured, you want your bevel to be facing up um, and there shouldn't be another way to install that. But just in case the hinge got mounted reversed, your bevel should be up. Uh, the hinge goes inside the tray so your pattern should be bolt head, hinge, and then tray. So then on the outside, you should only see the nut and the exposed threads. Then going forward in the extended arms, go ahead and fold this up so we can get a better view. On the extended arms, when you have the arms out, there should be a tube nut facing out of the kitchen that you'll place a bolt in. So just place your support on the end of the nut, on the end of the tube, and then run your bolt in. Uh, just get that nice and snug; it shouldn't come loose. Um, there are various uh, versions of these depending on how old your kit is, whether these have the rounded button heads that you see here or the flat heads installations the same. Um, one thing I would recommend is on the outside, I do not have all my bolts installed here, but if I did, typically there would be one in this hole here for, if you're using the sink, I would uninstall this bolt here, but install the rest. That way this does not interfere when it comes in. You can fold that nice and flush. So when you slide that in, it can come in. So once you get all that set up and you've got your countertop installed, Next would be setting up all of your sink, your faucet, and all the bracketry and hosing for that. So we'll go through my setup on this display here. Uh, depending on your Jeep and how you have it set up, there's gonna be different, you're probably gonna have a different setup from that looks different from mine. Uh, we'll just start on this side from the water source. On ours, we have a Rotopax mounted to our Molly grid. And on that Rotopax in your kit, you should have seen two washers. They're zinc coated. They will go underneath this cap here. And I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. So you'll have a hose that goes down to your water source. And this, you just slide th the, this connection here, you just slide through to both washers, put the nut on the back side, and just slide that hose in so you're gonna grab some water. And those will add as the conversion. That way you have your nozzle facing out. And then you'll put your male end here, put your hose on it so you can just quick connect like that. The female connection does have a shut off so when they're not connected you can flip the rotor packs upside down and the water won't seep out. Now for the hoses, you get it in one loom of 13 feet. You'll have to cut that where you see fit. Uh, mine's a little longer than 13 feet. But I ran from the Rotopax to the back side of the kitchen is where I decided to mount my pump. So just back here. Yeah, you can see the pump is screwed to the back side of the kitchen with the water inlet coming from the bottom and the hose coming out. Now the hoses you want to put on and you want to use uh, not like shown here, you want to use your clamps to hold them onto the pump so that they don't come off. Uh, good reference is to make sure your pump's facing the right direction. Make sure that, uh, that your wire leads are facing up and to the left. 
um, as shown right there. And then when you have the hose running out of the, this end of the pump, you will run that the rest of the way to your faucet. And this again has the same quick connect that is on the Rotopax without the threaded fitting so that you can hold upside down and it shouldn't leak besides what water happens to be in that fitting. So then you'll take your sink out. This bracket here just clips onto the edge and it says the lead hanging off there. Once again, you'll just have to cut a six inch section, put the hose on the faucet, connect part of it to this male connection here or vice versa, however you want to do it. And that way you can just hook it up. And that and Once that's hooked up, then you should be able to run water into your sink. And then when you're done with all of this, you'll just take the sink out, collapse it, disconnect your water, hide that away in your Jeep. Take your bracket off, store that wherever you may be, whether it's in the crown top, but then fold your, put your sink in, flip your counter over, slide your arms in, close up and store it away.